In the name of the Father, and of and the, the Son, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I welcome you all today on this very sad circumstances, you know, um, compounded by the fact that we have this COVID and some of our people cannot be here. We're especially thinking about Dennis up in Yellowknife and Wendy in Montreal and all their families and certainly other family members who can't be here today, but uh, here in spirit. And... Uh, compounded by the fact that this was a sudden death and that brings its own share of, uh, of grief and um, at this particular time and any time. So I offer you my condolences to the family and um, to all those people and welcome all those people from the, the good place of Peter's River, not far from my own home place. <laughs> so welcome to all of you at this beautiful historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. Most of here, a good dates back to 1855, longer than any of us remember. So I welcome you here today. So today we reflect at the beginning that our faith journey, and you know, Vince was a very faithful person in church, and like all the good people around the bay, and uh, we uh, today remember his baptism time when, you know, his parents brought him to be baptized. And that was his beginning of his faith journey. And today, of course, his journey also doesn't end here, but changes in ways to a new way uh, to his heavenly homeland. 
So we reflect on our baptism today. And on the day of his baptism, Vince was welcomed into the church and given a life in Christ and clothed with the garment of salvation. So as a symbol of his baptism, we place the white garment on the, on the um, remains here today. We greet here the ashes of our brother Vince and surround him with the church's prayer. We commend our brother Vince to the mercy of God and pray that the promise made to him in baptism will be fulfilled. And as we go forward, we will sing the summons, which is in your pamphlet book here. If everybody got a copy of it, they can sing along if they'd like. Please join in singing the summons found in your program. God Almighty Father, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Vince, whom you have called to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for our readings, and I'll call forward our first reading, Andrew. Andrew will do our first reading from 
the wisdom book. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster. And they're going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God has tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, And the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth. And the faithful will abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones. And he watches over his elect. Word word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, The Lord is my shepherd and nothing do I want.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We will transform the body of our humiliation, and that it may be confirmed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On that day as evening drew on, he said to them, let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him with him in the boat just as he was, and other boats were with him. A violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be stilled. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you be terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even the wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. First of all, I apologize for a great big mistake I made at the beginning down there by saying that 
welcome I forgot to welcome all the people from St. Stephen's. <laughs> Not Peter's River. I guess I was so used to going to Art Hicks's all the time when I was young. Maybe that was why, right? <laughs> but uh, of course, when I was young, you know, down there you didn't have we had a ferry across. You know, there was no was no road in the early early days. I remember, right? So welcome all of you. Uh, you know, when we gather in sadness today, and but you know, the meaning of our Eucharist or Mass is a thanksgiving. It, we give thanks to God for the life of Vince Fleming. So we gather with his family, his wife Debbie here, and Andrew and Dennis and Wendy and Jillian, grandchildren and all those others, his brothers and sisters and those who cannot be here as well. Some gathering from other parts of Newfoundland and other parts of Canada watching today. This is a time of sadness for you as Vince's death was so sudden. A very big shock to you all, I'm sure. And the fact that this pandemic makes it more difficult when family and friends cannot gather properly yet to celebrate the life of this good man. So on behalf of the Basilica Parish, because Vince and Debbie came here to Mass, we offer you our dearest sympathy, our comfort and prayers as you journey through this sudden death, this painful cross in your life. We pray that God will give you comfort in knowing that you are not alone in your grief. We gather here to thank God for Vince's life precisely because we believe that God has something to say to us in the wake of this sudden loss. The God of our faith is here among you as he was with the disciples in the boat in our gospel reading today, caring for you gently and calming the stormy seas of this moment of loss. He is reaching out to you with the arms of his infinite mercy and mourning with you. Remember that God is in your heart and supporting you. At each Mass, we remember Jesus and his great love and sacrifice for us by his death on the cross for our salvation. We also remember his mother Mary as well witnessed the crowning with thorns, the scourging and the insults, the torments that led to Jesus' death on the cross. Those who suffer, especially you, who suffer sudden broken hearts, have a special friend in Jesus. You can count on him to comfort you and strengthen you during this time of grieving. May you find some measure of comfort in the hope that one day you will be reunited with Vince, where there will be no more suffering or pain or just eternal peace with Jesus, the Good Shepherd. In our funeral mass today, we are many symbols of our baptism, the white cloth here representing the white cloth, of, the white garment of our baptism, the holy water for blessing, the baptismal candle, the Easter candle, representing Christ, the light of the world. You see, as I said at the beginning, life for each of us and Vince took on a completely different meaning when his parents, William and Pauline Fleming, decided to have him baptized in the church. When Vince and each of us were baptized, we became adopted sons and daughters of God. We began our journey back to God, and heaven became our true homeland, where there will be no more pain or suffering or death. I believe that each of us was chosen by God for a special vocation in life, a special purpose, unique to us, no matter how long that life is. And we believe that Vince was chosen by God for a special vocation of son and brother, husband, father, grandfather. And this vocation to family life, we know that he fulfilled so wonderfully in his lifetime. We know, we know that you, his family and friends, as watching too, are gather, grateful to God for the many blessings that God gave you in the person of Vincent. The obituary said something that struck me, that said everything, really said everything. He was a man who found the good in everyone and won the respect of many. And that's why I put that in the back of the bulletin. That says it all. He was first of all a man of faith, and a man of prayer who was dedicated to his church, and especially had a great love and devotion to St. Anne, I was told. He was a long-time dedicated and well-liked employee with the Conservation and Protection Branch of DFO. Reading through various online comments, a common phrase that people said about Vince was that he was fair and just with people. He respected them, and they respected him. He was a loving husband, father, and grandfather, who was generous and kind to everyone. He loved gardening particularly. You see the picture in our little bulletin. And hunting and all those things that had to do with outside and nature 
And by his job, you know, he tried to conserve it for generations to come. Many people, maybe in around the bay, wouldn't understand that. You know, yeah, but that's his job. His job, his, his career, was to protect and conserve nature for generations to come. Such an important job in our world today. You know, Pope Francis just wrote a few years ago an encyclical, a very important letter. We should all read it, really. It's called Laudato Si, in which he talks about the importance of preserving and protecting the earth, our common home, the home that God created. And Vince had an important part to play in that. So what, if you read that, you say, oh my, that's all about him. There is something about that experience of being intimately related to creation itself, I believe, helped Vince grow more fully into the mystery of God. Because some of us love, can easily find God in a sunset, or in nature, or out hunting, or out fishing, whatever you do, walking. And that's what we desperately need today because we are so alienated from the earth by our pollution and destruction of the gift of God's creation. So Vince's life was dedicated to the protection of that in his own time and place, in his own area. That's where he found God. Pope Francis said, and I quote, Today, amid so much darkness, we need to see the light of hope to be men and women who bring hope to others, to protect creation, to protect every man and woman, to look upon them with tenderness and love, and to open up a horizon of hope. It is to be a shaft of light breaking through the heavy clouds, he said. The vocation of being a protector, however, is not just something involving us Christians alone. It involves everyone. It means protecting all creation, the beauty of the created world. It means respecting each of God's creatures and respecting the environment in which we live. It means protecting people, showing love and concern each and every day for other people especially children, the elderly, those in need, who, we often are the last, who often are the last we think about. It means building sincere friendships in which we protect one another in trust, respect, and goodness. Now, wouldn't that seem that Pope Francis is talking about Vince Fleming in a lot of ways by his words? So people may ask us, what makes a meaningful life today? Some people say it's the length of life. You know, it wasn't, Vince wasn't very old. Some people say it is the possessions that we have. Some people say it is the relationships that we form. As Christians, like Vince, we have a clear definition of a meaningful life. We believe that our vocation, what gives us greatest meaning in life, what we are born for is to embrace God's love and reflect that back to the world. And that reflection of God's love is at the heart of a meaningful life. And we will be judged at the end of our lives not by how much money we have or all the diplomas we have or all the good things said about us. It's all about how we have loved others in practical, everyday ways. And there are many examples of how Vince did that in his life. As we contemplate today the mystery of Jesus' cross and resurrection and new life, we pray for you, the family and friends of Vince, in your sorrow, that Jesus will transform your darkest nights into the morning light of hope that he may lead you from darkness to light, from death to new life. So may Jesus bring his peace, his light, and his love into your lives in the days ahead. No matter what tomorrow brings, God's love will be there for you to lean on, to rest in, to build on. We pray that Jesus will take Vince to the rest and peace of his kingdom. And may the songs of the angels and smiles of the saints and martyrs greet him on his journey home. And may he rest in the arms of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Amen. And we stand now and uh, make our prayers of intercession. And I'm asking Dora to come forward. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. The response to the intercessions is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Vince received the light of Christ.
scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother Vince, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and we especially remember Vince's parents, William and Pauline, his brothers Albert and Don, and all the members of the Fleming and Kell families who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Vince seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel their darkness and doubt that comes from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God's face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have helped the family during this time, by their prayers and their presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Vince. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. And we ask this to Christ our Lord. Please be seated now for our offertory. Our offertory chant, I Will Never Forget You, is found in your program on page 2. that my, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For the good of all is to the church. Let us pray. Please stand now. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Vince, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that though saddened by the certainty of dying, might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with all the angels and saints, and with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his suffering and death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the whole world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember your servant Vince, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, especially the members of Vince's family who have gone before him. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. John the Baptist, Saint Anne, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. We pray.
pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy will will be done done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share that peace of Christ with each other. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion chant is number 604, Seeds Scattered and Sown, and the words are found in your program. Seeds scattered and sown, wheat gathered and grown.
And let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it our brother Vince may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Vince. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. In baptism, Vince shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May he be welcomed into the glory of eternal life. Of course, a holy water represents his baptism. a sign of respect for our brother Vince. We let his incense. The incense, of course, are, is the resin of the plants in the Middle East. And of course, during the time of the burial of Jesus, they would use this to perfume the body. So that's where we get this beautiful symbol of our prayer rising to God who has called Vince to share in his glory. Father of mercies, we commend our brother Vince in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, we will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed on him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Vince. And help us to remain to comfort one another with the assurances of our faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Vince forever. On your behalf, I'd like to thank Jacinta and here for singing and Patty for the Patty Fowler for the music. It's beautiful, you know. Okay. Okay, there's a reception at the Comfort Inn, Airport Road, and Thank everybody for their kindness and support. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. You know, when I saw the picture of Vince there that I was given, I said, well, I, I went to my little archives. <laughs> and if you look at the bottom, I'd like to read that last little poem because I think it's so beautiful. Because if you're looking out the sea, you know, down the bay, you know what it's like. So the, the poem goes like this called Gone From My Sight. I'm standing upon the seashore. A ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and watch her until at length she hangs like a speck of white cloud, just where the sea and sky come to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there she's gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large in mass, hull and spar as she was when she left my side. And she is just as able to bear her load of living freight to her destined port. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone says, there she's gone, there are other eyes watching her coming. 
and other voices ready to take up the glad shout, here she comes, and that is dying. And my God, may God bless all of us here today, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our recessional chant is found in your program, We Shall Go Out.